Hey, it's Jay, a.k.a. Ferris Bueller from the RPF. I got a great question uh, today from Junebug1 on the RPF saying, Great video on smoothing parts, but how do you set the shell thickness in Blender? Well, that's a great question. So I'm going to go ahead and do a quick two-minute tip video. Um, so in the last video, I, I, I showed how to smooth out this lower jaw, and uh, I went ahead and printed it. It turned out pretty well. I'll do another video on that later. But we'll go ahead and get right to it. How do you set the thickness of a piece? As I talked about in a previous video, um, if you pull in a, a mesh from a Pepakura file, this helmet from Amarbu 1, for example, there is no thickness to it. It's basically just the sheet of paper. The geometry on the inside here is exactly the geometry on the outside. Uh, if you go ahead and go to wireframe view, you'll see it's just a single wireframe mesh. Okay. So what we'll go ahead and do is add some thickness. So if we go back in here and look at the solid, okay, and we'll go over to the right side of the screen, and there's this little menu here with a little wrench on it. You click on that, you go to Add Modifier. Okay, down here under Generate, there's Solidify. You click Solidify, and that gives you this Solidify modifier. Okay, the default in here is going to give you a thickness of 0 0.01. Now I've got units set in here as uh, millimeters. So obviously that's that's pretty thin. That's too thin. So what I did for the other pieces, and I'll do it here, is I just went ahead and set a thickness of three. Now before I do that, I want to point out a couple things, and you'll see you'll see what's going to happen here. Um, whenever you have areas of your model such as this groove, okay, that's right here. See this groove that was modeled in. Okay, small thin areas like that. Uh, really thin detail areas like this here where you've got faces underneath and faces on top that are in close proximity and you still you still want to maintain that geometry in your print okay but when you start to apply a thickness blender doesn't know that that's what you want to keep it's going to apply a three millimeter thickness to this face meaning it's going to give thickness down it's also going to apply a three millimeter thickness to this face which is going to put three millimeters of thickness in that direction and they're going to intersect so I'll go ahead and, and, and demonstrate that by unhiding the modifier here. And sure enough, you can see there's a little bit of overlap there. So there, there's, there's areas where the geometry is starting to bleed through to the outside. And we don't want that. Okay, And I'll show you how to fix that in a minute. To further demonstrate, we can take this thickness and actually bump it up higher. And as I go higher and higher and higher, you can see that effect. Okay, You can see what's happening there. I'll go back and forth. Okay. So, um, in order to correct that, we basically need to have an editable mesh on the inside first, and we don't have that. Until that modifier is applied, we can only edit the outside. So, we'll live with that for right now, and we'll go over here and set a couple of things. So, um, here you've got what's called the offset clamp, and I just do a 0.5. I'll be perfectly honest with you, I'm not the blender guru, I'm not an expert on this. I, I've, I've played with these settings enough. Uh, on, on other pieces to know what, what really works out well for me. So I did a, just this offset clamp of 0.5. Um, I can get back with you guys later if you have specific questions on what that means, but um, I'm sure you can find it out there in Google if you really want to know the, uh, the math behind it. Uh, a couple other things I want to show you here. Um, this, this option here for high quality, you click on that one there, and what it does is it calculates the normals. Uh, you know that's that I do that that way the normals get calculated for all the faces it doesn't really change much it just helps me sleep well at night knowing that that my entire model's got normals calculated and and I can go through there and 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 do whatever adjustments I need to make okay this option here for fill rim all right uh, I deselected it so I could demonstrate exactly what it does all right so here you can see we made a three millimeter thickness and here's the outer wall and then an inner wall where that, that gap between the two is three millimeters and you can actually see here uh, where that geometry is bleeding through from the groove on the side of the helmet okay that geometry is coming through here and we're gonna fix that in a little while um, but basically what the fill rim modifier does when you click that is it closes those gaps up for you so there would be this this rim all the way around all the way around where you apply the thickness and you can basically see between the inner shell of the helmet and the outer shell of the helmet okay and we want that to be filled in so we click fill rim and it takes care of that for us 
So we're good to go. Now the 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 uh, thickness is where we want it to be. Three, three millimeters is pretty good for 3D printer. So um, I found pretty good successes. My face plate and lower jaw were, were printed with the same thickness. So we'll go ahead and do that for this upper part of the helmet as well. Um, like I said before, in order to to modify any of the mesh inside here, we need to apply the modifier. So once you do that, though, you can't go back and adjust these things individually unless you go back, uh, undo the undo, and then add the modifier again. So uh, once you get these settings where you want them, you can go ahead and click apply. Okay. If you notice here, it says modifiers cannot be applied in edit mode. Okay. So this is good. It protects you. Uh, you go into object mode. So you've got your your solid here. You hit apply. Okay. Now if we go back into edit mode, which you can do by hitting tab if you don't want to go down here to this menu every time. Go back in edit mode. Now you can see we've got an editable mesh on the inside. And then we can go in and start cleaning up these areas here where the geometry is bled through. Okay. And you know, there's a couple ways you can do it. I mean, you can just grab stuff and suck it back down inside the inside the model itself so you can't see it. Uh, and then once you go and export the mesh for printing, uh, your, your your software is going to ignore that um, when you run it through NetFab or whatever else. Okay, so I hope that answers your question, Junebug. Um, that's how you put some thickness into it. I can go into a lot more detail later on with other pieces if you'd like, but uh, wanted to keep this one as short as possible and as useful as possible. Thanks.